Hello, welcome to another video from 3.5 Archive. Today we're going to be doing our 39th D&D 3.5 Prestige Class review, and we're going to be looking at the Disciple of Dispater from the Book of Vile Darkness. Uh, Disciples of Dispater follow the Lord of the Second Layer of the Nine Hells. Uh, Dispater, the Lord of the uh, Impregnable Iron Tower. Uh, this is a patron devil of war and intrigue. And this is a prestige class that's focused on metal, iron, and uh, and warfare. So to become a disciple of Dispater, you need to be evil, of course. You're following a devil lord. You need to have a base attack bonus of plus six, which makes sense as you are following a warlike devil. For feats, you're going to need Disciple of Darkness, Expertise, uh, so listed because this is a 3.0 prestige class, so it was called Expertise back then rather than Combat Expertise. But it's the same feat, uh, and power attack. Disciple of Darkness doesn't have any prerequisites, and it gives you a plus one luck bonus once a day on a die roll while committing an act of evil. Not a very stellar feat by itself, but it's more known for the options it unlocks for you. And in this case, it unlocks for you a very powerful prestige class, as we'll see. Um, so you'll need Disciple of Darkness, Combat Expertise, and Power Attack. So you're going to need to take three feats, and you're going to need to have a 13 Intelligence and a 13 Strength. And as a fighter, most likely, or fighter type going into this Prestige class, you're probably going to have at least a 13 Strength anyway. But having a 13 Intelligence as well is going to be a bit of a requirement. Uh, finally, uh, for the Special Requirement, uh, Dispater initiates new Disciples with a Terrible Ritual. Uh, it requires a sacrifice of an intelligent being atop an iron altar, uh, and it must take place in the presence of an Aranese demon, who's going to report back to Dispater afterwards to, presumably to let him know that you are now his loyal servant. Uh, so, requiring three feats and a plus six base attack bonus, as well as the, you know, flavor requirements of being evil uh, and attending this ritual, uh, is going to make this prestige class... Uh, moderately restrictive, but even then not very, especially if you're coming into this as a fighter, you're almost certainly going to take power attack anyway, so it's really only requiring two feats. If you have the ability score prerequisites for this, you could knock out all these prerequisites, uh, feat-wise at least, at first level if you're playing a human. You'll still definitely have room for any kind of build that you're doing, and most likely you're going to want to do a crit-focused build, a critical hit-focused build for this prestige class, as you'll see. So the Disciple of Dispater has a D10 hit die, a uh, full base attack bonus, and amazingly has a good save in every single uh, saving throw category. Good fortitude, good reflex, and good will. Uh, that's very impressive, as really that's something that you, we don't see very much except maybe for the Monk Prestige class, or maybe the Survivor Prestige class from Savage Species, uh, if I'm recalling correctly. You're going to have uh, four plus intelligence modifier skill points per level, so that'll be an improvement most likely if you're coming in as a fighter, equivalent if you're coming in as a barbarian, and a little bit of a downgrade if you're coming in as a ranger for some reason. Uh, so just for the base numbers, this prestige class is great. You have the second best hit die available, full base attack, amazing saving throws, and decent skills. Uh, but the features are what really makes this prestige class what it is. And it starts out a little bit slow, but the features it does end up giving you are truly spectacular. Uh, so let's take a look. At level 1, you're going to gain Device Lore. This gives you a plus 2 competence bonus on disabled device checks against devices mostly made of metal. And it allows you to find devices mostly made of metal, traps mostly made of metal, that is, just as a rogue can. So this is sort of like maybe 50% trap finding, maybe at worst 25% depending on how your dungeon master constructs their traps, if they include any traps on the campaign. So this is like having maybe half of trap finding. It's probably not going to be sufficient to be the only trap finder in a party, uh, but if somebody isn't playing a rogue or, you know, scout or spell thief or anything like that, you can definitely uh, substitute in a disciple of dispater if you really need to. Um... And then, so this is a little bit of a slow start to the Prestige class, but at second level, you're going to gain Iron Hues. Uh, this allows you to, once per day per point of Constitution bonus, add a plus three Divine bonus on damage from attacks made that round. Uh, so this is going to, you know, it's a once per day thing, but odds are you're probably going to have, you know, a 14, 15, 16 Constitution. So two or three times a day, you're going to be dealing out an extra maybe six, maybe nine 
uh, maybe even 12 damage per round, assuming all your attacks hit, which they probably won't. But this is going to be adding maybe, you know, 25 uh, or so damage per day to your character's uh, damage output, which is nothing to sneeze at. If you compare this to, you know, other feats or features out there, it's it, it, it holds up pretty well. It's not going to be as good maybe even as something just like weapon specialization will be. But adding that onto this when you need a little bit of extra damage, this is going to definitely be a useful feature. At level 3, you're going to gain Rusting Grasp once per day. You can use it as though you were a 15th level caster. Rusting Grasp is great. You can It's basically slay living for a metallic uh, creature. This is going to allow you to uh, touch a maybe an Iron Golem or something like that and do 3d6 plus 15 points of damage to them, which is excellent. Golems are immune to most magic, but this doesn't allow spell resistance, and there's no saving throw involved. You could also rust an opponent's weapon, uh, or if you touch their armor, you can reduce their armor class by a d6. So it's a very versatile spell, and if you go up against opponents that uh, are wearing or using metal in any way, uh, you can significantly degrade their uh, you know offensive or defensive capabilities. So it's a great debuffing feature. Uh, use it as a spell-like ability, so you will have to worry about concentrating to use this uh, in melee. But uh, if you use it, if you use it carefully and strategically, um, you'll definitely be able to get some use out of it. And then at level 4, a Disciple of Dispater gets a plus 1 insight bonus on attacks and damage rolls using an iron or steel weapon, which is most of the best weapons in the game. This is the iron power feature. Um, so a plus 1 insight bonus on attack and damage rolls, so it will stack with almost anything. And then your threat range is doubled as if you were using a keen weapon. Then at level 8, your insight bonus on attack and damage rolls improves to plus 2, and your threat range triples. This isn't going to stack with the keen weapon quality, but it is going to stack with the improved critical feat. So if you have that, and you have a falchion, and you're an 8th level disciple of Dispater, then that means that you're going to have a 9 to 20 critical threat range. Yeah, doubling a triple is going to be a multiplication of times 4 rather than times 6 due to the way that multiplication chains work in D&D 3.0 and 3.5. But even so, this is going to give you an insane critical threat range. And that means that if your attack roll hits, it's probably a critical threat. And really, your attack roll in some ways is replaced by the critical threat confirmation roll. And if you have a wizard who's willing to cast Dolorous Blow on you so that all of your critical threats are automatically confirmed, then you become capable of outputting some truly insane amounts of damage. If you were to combine this maybe with the Exotic Weapon Master Prestige class that we've looked at in an earlier episode of our Prestige class reviews, which allowed you to improve the critical modifier of certain weapons, exotic weapons, um, then perhaps something like an Elven Court Blade or something like that would be able to have a 9 to 20 slash times 3 uh, critical stat. And that would just be insane, especially when combined with power attack and the attack bonuses and damage bonuses that this Prestige class is giving you. Even if you're just using it with a Falchion and the approved critical feat, which you probably should be doing if you want to make the most of this feature, you're going to be effectively doubling your damage in many cases. And while, yes, many monsters are going to be immune to critical hits, there are many more that won't be, and in that case, the damage bonus that this gives you is just going to be truly insane. Uh, it's going to be almost doubling your damage, and it seems a little bit amazing that such a powerful feature is locked behind this rather niche, unusual prestige class based around following uh, a Tyrant of the Nine Hells, but such it is for D&D 3.5, or in this case 3.0, um... This is an unparalleled feature. You don't really see this anywhere else. A 9 to 20 critical threat range is going to be better even than the Nimble Rites uh, threat range from the Monster Manual 2. And that's a monster that simply has that critical threat range because the monster designer wanted it to. Uh, there's no justification given for it. And even so, even as a monster, uh, it looks like a typo. So this is going to be give you an ability that you really don't get anywhere else in 3.5. Uh, having a such a huge critical threat range is going to be amazing for your character. And this is probably the most important feature of the Prestige class by far. So with that to compare to, uh, let's look at the rest of the class features here. At level 5, you're going to be able to summon an Aranese Devil once per day. It's going to function as a summon monster spell cast by a 15th level caster. And then when you reach 9th level in this prestige class, you can summon 1d4 Aranese once per day. 
So this is nice to have. You can have a, a challenge rating 8 devil fighting by your side for a little bit for 15 rounds. So that should be long enough to clear out maybe one or two rooms in a dungeon if you're quick about it. And then having a D4 of them at 9th level, when you're probably going to be a 15th level character, is going to be pretty useful as well. Summoning is always strong, and the ability to summon an actually useful creature like an Aranese Devil is going to help you out a lot in combat. You are going to have to be doing this as a spell-like ability, so with all the regular caveats that come with uh, you know, spell casting as a spell-like ability. But this is still really great, and for a non-spellcaster character, this is going to be a nice little trick to have up your sleeve. And then... Uh, at level 6, you're going to get Greater Iron Hues. So this is going to allow you to add a plus 6 Divine Bonus on damage rolls from attacks made um, during one round. You can use this once per day per point of Constitution Bonus. And while this doesn't stack with the regular Iron Hues, the uses are separate. So if you have a Constitution Bonus of plus 3, you can use Iron Hues 3 times a day, and you can use Greater Iron Hues 3 times per day. You just can't use them at the same time. Or rather, you can, but they're going to overlap. And presumably that this is a free action to activate, seeing as you activate it for damage rolls done in the same round. Um, it's not explicitly mentioned here, but it's kind of implied. So this is another great boost to damage. I mean, if you're going to be getting four iterative attacks as a full base attack bonus character, and say you only have something like a 16 constitution, you're going to be getting nine uh, times three, and then times another three uh, or four, for a total of, you know, 108 points of damage extra per day that your character is going to be able to deal. Uh, so this is really nice to have. Uh, it's extra damage on top of your already extremely powerful iron power abilities, giving you extra insight bonus on attacks and damage rolls, and the insane improved critical threat range feature. So you're going to be an almost unparalleled fighter in melee combat, so long as you're using a weapon made of iron or steel, which isn't hard to do. And then at level 7, you're going to gain the Iron Skin feature. This allows you to produce an effect identical to the Stone Skin spell cast by a 15th level caster uh, upon yourself once per day. So this is going to give you basically 150 points of damage absorption as damage reduction 10 slash adamantine. And it's going to allow you to avoid the material component cost of Stone Skin that usually makes it a pain to use. But you're going to be able to do this on yourself for free once per day. So this is going to be saving you thousands of gold pieces if you use this effectively. And it's also going to be making your character uh, even tougher than they otherwise would be. So this is another fantastic feature. Uh, finally, at level 10, uh, you can do the Iron Body spell on yourself once per day as if you were an 18th level caster. So this is going to be, again, exceeding your uh, most likely what your character level is going to be 16 at this point. Uh, you're going to be getting this as an 18th level caster. So it's going to be better than if an equivalent level wizard had cast it. And you're going to get Iron Body, which is great. That gives you a lot of defensive abilities and I believe a slam attack and some other things. Um, so this prestige class, its features are giving you some great defensive options. They're giving you some unparalleled offensive options. Um, and they're giving you some useful utility spells as well. The ability to summon some Aranese Devils to help you. Uh, the ability to do some rusting grasp, maybe destroy some doors, destroy some enemy armor, some enemy weapons, rust and iron golem, that sort of thing. So this is just an extremely powerful prestige class all around. I would give this one three stars for concept and five stars for execution. And really, in some ways, maybe this shouldn't be the score that it's getting, given that this is maybe borderline overpowered in some views. Yes, it's not you know a spell casting class. It's not a full caster class. This isn't the Initiate of the Sevenfold Veil or any sort of thing like that. But it is very, very strong, especially compared to a regular fighter character. This is maybe one of the best prestige classes out there for a fighter to take if they want to increase their damage output and their defensive abilities. You don't need to be a spellcaster to get into this. Really, the biggest ask here is having a 13 intelligence so that you can take combat expertise. Uh, and, of course, to be an evil-aligned character. And maybe this is one of the biggest issues with this prestige class is that such a powerful, um, unequaled, critical, threat-range-improving ability is locked behind, again, a follower of a Devil Lord. Admittedly, the Devil Lord of the second layer of the Nine Hells, but even so, that's not something that you're going to be running into a lot of. And this is a feature that almost every fighter character would want. So in some ways, maybe this could be only two or three stars for execution if we're looking at it from that angle, where this prestige class, in the context of what's available to fighter characters, is going to be pretty overpowered. 
and the temptation to be evil in order to get that expanded threat range uh, for critical hits is going to be maybe almost too much of a temptation for some to pass up. And you can look at this as a good thing, uh, flavor-wise, or a bad thing. It's really up to you. But this is certainly an oddity uh, in the world of D&D 3.5 prestige classes. Uh, overall, I would stick to my original rating of 3 stars for concept, 5 stars for execution. The only real change that I would make to this, you know, otherwise fantastic prestige class would be to, you know, maybe put these features into some other prestige classes that would... Uh, allow other characters access to them without having to be evil and without having to uh, to serve a devilish despot in order to gain access to them. But this is a great prestige class if you're an evil character to make for a great villain, although you really would have to worry about killing off some of the player characters if you're having them face a disciple of Dispater because this is, again, going to be capable of immense damage output. And they're going to have a lot of uh, a lot of survivability as well between Iron Skin and Iron Body, and being able to summon Aranese allies to help them. So that's going to be about it for this D and D three point five prestige class review. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and so on. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time here on Three Five Archive.